Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, get your King James Bible. I felt I've been doing a lot of work, so I felt we'll set down for this one. Plus, there's a lot of scripture that I decided in my notes to make it shorter that I'm going to be actually opening the Bible. Um, I know some of you really think I should be doing that every time, but I make notes and I try to keep the videos as short as I can. I'm very slow turners. You'll find out today. But we're going to turn together today, and we're going to finish second. Uh, not finish it. We're going to get close to finishing it. 1 Timothy 3.16, part 4. Preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world. Okay, we're going to finish our series on that. So first, turn to 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. So we did a study and we talked about God was manifest in the flesh, the likeness of sinful flesh. Okay, Jesus had a body in the Old Testament that was, in, that was incorruptible, like we're going to have someday. Right? And we did a whole study on that, what it means by God was manifest in the flesh. People will take that and say, well, Jesus was, was a created being. No, he wasn't. He just came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He had an incorruptible body in the Old Testament. Justified in the Spirit, we talked about it. Okay, how the Spirit um, bear witness. The, the, remember before two or three witnesses, let every word be established. God the Father was a witness. The Spirit was a witness. He was justified in the Spirit. A scene of angels, we talked about that, how angels were involved. Okay. Um, now we're getting into the priest and to the Gentiles and believed on in the world. So first thing we got to do is we got to get into context here. Okay, why is it so important that the gospel, Jesus Christ, which is the heart of the gospel, why was he preached unto the, uh, the Gentiles? Why is that so important? Well, one of the biggest mistakes people make is in the gospels, They, if you go to the four gospels, I know they're called gospels, but... Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you try to get the gospel out of there, you're going to get confused. Why? Because it's not the same gospel. At the beginning of the gospels, it's preaching a different gospel. John the Baptist, and I might be getting ahead of myself, he's going out there and he's preaching repentance. Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Why? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay? What does it mean by the kingdom of heaven is at hand? It's a whole other study, but it's that Jesus is your king. He's going to bring in a thousand year reign, that you have to believe that Jesus is your king. And Jesus went to them first. I'm getting ahead of myself again. Salvation is of the Jews in that time period. But today, is today salvation only of the Jews today? So let's go through the scriptures. We're going to talk about Jesus Christ. I love Jesus Christ. How many people love Jesus Christ? The real Jesus Christ of Scripture. Uh, turn to Matthew chapter 10. We're going to be going through some Matthew. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. It says, these twelve Jesus sent forth. Okay? He sent them forth to preach, the king, uh, to repent, be baptized for the remission of sins, the kingdom of heaven's at hand, and they were given get, they were given the power to heal. All right? And the sign gifts. It says, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles. And into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. See, it separates Gentiles from Samaritans. Okay? But he said, even in the Samaritans, don't even go by the Samaritans. It's only to the Jews. For salvation is of the Jews. Okay? Jesus is a Jew. But when he first started his ministry, it started with John the Baptist. He came first, a predecessor before Jesus, to pave the way to point to Jesus Christ. And he did, he did such thing. Okay. Turn to Matthew 15. So we see there, you're not supposed to go to the Jews. We'll talk about what changed. Why is it so important 
that Jesus was preached unto the Gentiles? Right. Well, I'll, I'll just go ahead and give you the answer real quick. It's because salvation went out to the world. It's no longer salvation is of the Jews. Salvation went out to the world. Jesus is still Jew. He's still the heart of, of the gospel. Death, burial, and resurrection. Repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. Absolutely. But it went out to the world. That's why it's so important that, he was pre that Jesus was preached unto the Gentiles. But right now we're at a time period where it wasn't preached. Jesus wasn't preached to the Gentiles. Only to the Jews. All right. Matthew chapter 15 verse 21. Then read to 28. Then Jesus went. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Salvation is of the Jews. That was Jesus' earthly ministry. Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'm your king. He's given the Jewish people a chance to accept him as their king. But they reject him. And when they rejected him, salvation went out to the world. But he answered, said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 25. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread, he's talking about the Jews, and to cast it to dogs, talking about the Gentiles, and the Samaritans. Verse 27. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And we've used this passage just so that there was only two times in the Bible that Jesus was like showing that people had great faith. Okay, and not this was probably not one of them, but great faith in both times it was a Gentile. Where he actually mentions, I've never seen such great faith. Not all in all of Israel. They were Gentiles. But he knew that he was going to be the savior of the world. He knew he's God. But he still had to give the Jewish people an opportunity. Because he's also God. He's a just God. He still had to say, hey, I'm offering the kingdom. I'm your king. Will you accept me? He knew they would reject him, but he still had to offer it because he's a righteous God. He's a just God. Uh, John chapter 4. Go over to John chapter 4. So we see there, it's for the Jewish people. The gospel that he was preaching before the death and burial resurrection isn't the gospel for today. It's the gospel that was just for the Jewish people. Okay. John 4, 1 through 30. You can read the whole thing. Well, not all the whole thing, but a lot of it. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, why did Jesus baptize? Because we were going to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. He's going to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. His disciples were baptizing with water. You know, the gospel at the time, repent and be baptized for the, in, the, in the water for the remission of sins. And John says, I baptize with water, but he that cometh after me that is greater than I, he shall baptize with both um, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hell. People get saved, Holy Ghost. People who are lost, fire. Hell. Okay? Jesus baptizes with the Holy Ghost. That's why he didn't do any baptism. Because it wasn't his time to start baptizing until his death, burial, and resurrection. Verse three. He lifted Judea and de he left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Here we're going to talk about Samaria. 
Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. So it's just Jesus. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask... I mean, I mean you can't get more expect. Jesus is a Jew. Right? Some of those out there have a hard time with it. How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest ask of him, and he would have given thee living water. Verse 11, The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Now stop and think about it. It's, she can't get over the physical side of it. How many of those false religions that claim to be Christian, like the um, Charismatics and everything, that you have to be water baptized and you've got to speak with tongues and, and this, and that, they get stuck on the physical and they are clueless, I repeat, clueless on the spiritual side. Just completely clueless. She's stuck on the physical. He's talking spiritually. The Holy Spirit being sealed into the day of redemption. Okay. Verse 12. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? The answer is yes. 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. I mean, think about it. They go, they have to keep going to those battle buildings to get their fix on, to get their flesh rise, the flesh rise, and everything. You have people, believe it or not, a lot of people get baptized more than once because they like the show and everything. Why? Because whoever drinketh from that water will thirst again. They're false converts. But who but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into him everlasting life. The Holy Spirit, that spiritual circumcision made without hands and being sealed into the day of redemption where we get eternal life in an incorruptible body. I look forward to that day. Verse 15, The woman saith unto him, Sir, Give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Remember, Jesus knows the hearts of men and women. Jesus saith unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that sayest thou truly. They can see right through her. She was trying to deceive him. I don't have a husband. In other words, I'm just a single woman, never been married, acting act like she's never been married and everything. He saw right through her. Now notice that it doesn't phase her. That's one thing that every time I read this, I always say, Lord, you realize it doesn't phase her. Look what she, how her reaction is when she gets caught. Verse 19, The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. She was amazed that he knew that, but she wasn't ashamed of it. She wasn't convicted by it. That thou art a prophet. Verse 20. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem in the place where men ought to worship. And Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Remember we talked about this in the Old Testament? About how they had the high places, and they had the groves? Don't want to get into that too much, because it'll... Uh, It'll offend the, the Christmas people. Um, but we talked about the groves in our Christmas tree study. Okay? And we did another study on what the high places were. Okay? They were in sin. They always say, but they, he, he, was his right, he was, had a right standing in God's eyes. But the one thing he was still wrong about is he didn't take away the high places and the groves. They were still sacrificing in the high places and the groves instead of sacrificing at Jerusalem. Okay, the temple that was built, built by Solomon. Mm -hmm. 
So that's what she's talking about. 21, here it is. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, talking about salvation, going out to the world. It's no longer isolated to just the Jewish people. He was talking about his death, well he didn't mention it, but in the future, his death, burial, and resurrection, and salvation, the gospel changes, and the salvation goes out to the world. God's grace is the same, it's always there, but how it's dispensed is different. That's why it's a different gospel, I say different gospel, than the one before he died on the cross. It right? goes out to the world. Right? You're going to be able to worship the Lord Jesus Christ anywhere. I, can wor I worship the Lord Jesus Christ right here in my home. You worship the Lord Jesus Christ where you are, brothers and sisters in Christ. Not in a Babel building, not in a temple made with hands, not in a ministry headquarters. Sorry, I had to put that one in there. Wherever you are, your body is the temple for the Holy Ghost. Your body is. And that's what he's talking about here. Ye worship, here it is, ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Now he's going back to past tense, like he's talking about before he dies on the, on the cross. Salvation is of the Jews. After his death, burial, and resurrection, salvation goes on to the world. Okay? It's preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, Verse 23, But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. In spirit and in truth. That's a tough one. I've had brethren fall away that forget that verse. You're supposed to worship the Lord God, Jesus Christ, who is God, the Father. There's only one capital G, God. The Father, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, they're still trying to, the Trinitarians are still trying to ignore that, spit on that, and explain it away. But there are brethren that have forgotten that. We're supposed to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Okay. It's not about Babel buildings. It's not about um, the flesh. Okay, Traditions of men. Okay? You've made the death of the cross of Christ of none effect by your traditions. Because they're not worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Holidays. Not worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Some brethren have forgotten that. But he says, There cometh now when the true worshipers, true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when I got saved, I was honest with my um, testimony, and I'm honest with you brothers and sisters today. You know what I struggle with? Everybody struggles with sin today. You know what I struggle with? Hollywood movies, TV shows, video games, and once you really get into porn, it's something that you struggle with for the rest of your life. It is. When you've really profaned your brain and, and not abstained from the uh, uh, it was abstain from all appearance of evil. It's something that you're going to struggle with for the rest of your life. You can, God can get it out of your life for the most part, but every time you walk out that door, the lost world doesn't doesn't live right. Okay, Satan's always going to try to sift you as wheat. Remember, we talked about this in another study. He's going to try to sift you as wheat, and he's going to try to find your weak spots. Video games is a weak spot for me. Hollywood movies and TV shows is a weak spot for me. Video games, weak spot for me. All right. When you fall into temptation as a Christian, you start falling back into sin, you're not worshiping the Father in spirit and in truth. You're worshiping the flesh. And you're putting the flesh first. Everybody has different addictions, whether it be holidays, whether it be alcohol, uh, drugs, fornication, um, just all kinds of addictions out there. I don't have a problem with a lot of those addictions, but other people do. When you start falling into addiction where your flesh gets hot, you start elevating your flesh and letting your flesh be in charge, you cease to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. It's now all about the flesh. Be very careful, brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember, repent, forsake, and get back. 
to where you left off with the Lord. Get back to worshiping the Father in spirit and in truth. That's what makes. That's one of the things that's so great about God's grace and God's love. He'll take you back. You can fail the Lord and fall flat on your face and be just totally make a mistake. And you come back to the Lord. Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. What I did was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have promoted that. I shouldn't have said that. Lord, please forgive me. I'm getting it out of my life. I'm turning back around to you and facing you and keeping my eyes on you. I'm going to get back to where I started. And he takes you back and you get back to where you left off with the Lord. You get back to worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Okay? For the Father seeketh such to worship. I'm sorry to go on that little rabbit trail a little bit. But that verse is a powerful verse. It's so important to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. So let's get back to the study. Sorry about that. Chapter 24. God is a spirit. Capital S spirit. So the spirit of God is connected to God and can hold the title of God. The Holy Spirit. This isn't talking about God has a spirit of his own. That's why it's a capital S spirit. It's talking about the Holy Spirit. God is a Holy Spirit. He has a Holy Spirit. It's connected to Him. Whatever He heareth, that shall He speak. God speaks through the Holy Spirit to people. A whole other study. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. He says it twice that they must worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's how important this is. Don't fall away from that, brothers and sisters of Christ. Stay true to that. Worshiping the Lord God in spirit and in truth. Don't, st don't be worshiping God in flesh and lies. Because that's the opposite. If you're worshiping, because there's a lot of people out there, the, these Babel buildings, uh, there's uh, people online that I've come across where they worship God in flesh and in lies. They're not Bible believers. Tom, like, uh, Robert, I was think, talking to the Lord earlier, you know, Robert Breaker, Edward P. F., you know, Shepherd's Ambassador, uh, King's Table, all of them. They worship God in the flesh and in lies and deception. They're deceiving people. We need to remember we need to be about the Spirit. Worship the Lord in spirit. It's about our spirit, not elevating our flesh, not letting our flesh get the better out of us. It's about worshiping in spirit and in truth, absolute truth. Verse 25, The woman said faith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I am I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples, and marveled that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? Kind of like the same thing that happened with Peter. Peter has to gets that vision. Cloth comes down, unclean meats, clean meats, and you can eat all of them. And he goes and starts preaching the gospel to the Gentiles, and that upsets some of the Jews. And he's got to sit down and talk. It's a big thing with the Jews. We'll get into that. I'm getting ahead of myself. But that's what's going on here. That's a Samaritan. What's Jesus doing talking to a Samaritan? We're not supposed to have any dealings with them. Verse 28, The woman then left her water pot and went her way unto the city and saith to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. And the, and the mean, while his disciples... I think we're going to stop there, right? Yeah, 30. You can keep reading. His disciples and the people talked to him and everything. It probably wonders if the Samaritans, since it separates them from the Gentiles... If the Samaritans at one time were Jews, but remember the Old Testament, that you'd be cut off. If you're doing this wickedness, remember she had five husbands, and the man that she's with right now is not her husband. That those were a group of Jews that were used to be Jews, but they were cut off. That's why the Jews had no dealings with them. Nothing to do with the Samaritans, because they are now cut off from the Jewish people. They're treated as if they're not Jews anymore. I mean, someone can correct me on that. But they still had some of the Jewish teachings about the Christ and the Messiah coming and everything. But you see there, he talks about how salvation is of the Jews, but he talks about in the future. He's talking future. 
There comes a time, talking about future, we'll read it again. Uh, verse 21, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, future, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet Jerusalem worship the Father. Okay? Salvation is going to go out to the world. Your body becomes the temple for the Holy Ghost. That's why it's so important that, that, that Jesus was preached to the Jewish people. Something changed. The New Testament comes in. A lot of people, like the Jewish people, they will ignore the New Testament. They still stick with the Old and ignore the New Testament. They're still waiting and, and they're still preaching that, you know, not all of them, but, you know, they're still waiting for their Messiah, their, the Christ to come. When Jesus Christ already came, the Messiah already came, and they rejected him. Now I put down here, Jesus preached to the woman of Samaria, salvation is of the Jews. What changed? Well, the Jews rejected Jesus Christ. Mark 16, 14, if you want to turn there. Read 16, 14, and 15. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart after his death and burial resurrection. Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Verse 15, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What's the gospel now? It's no longer repent and be baptized for the remissions of sins, even though they tried to keep that Acts as a transition book. They still tried to go to the Jewish people to give them a, a second chance, you know, to accept Jesus Christ as their Messiah. But that wasn't the gospel anymore. The gospel was, um, the new gospel is repent and believe in the finish, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It wasn't repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's not there anymore. Okay. When John the Baptist, the uh, gospel that was preached by John the Baptist, because you see, I'm, am I just saying this? Let's check the scriptures. Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. And saying, this is John, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven. Uh, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violence take it by force. It's talking about the physical kingdom is what is being preached. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. When John the Baptist got thrown in prison, Jesus started his earthly ministry. It says, from that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus preached that physical kingdom. He hadn't died on the cross yet. Mark 1.15 says, And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Remember, kingdom of heaven is always a reference to the physical kingdom. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. You can only take something physical by force. Right? They can kill this body, but the temple itself, the Holy Ghost, my soul, they can't touch that. The spiritual kingdom. But the kingdom of God can be a reference to the physical kingdom, or it can be a reference to the spiritual kingdom. Okay? So here it's talking about the physical kingdom when it says kingdom of God. And the reason we say Acts is a transition book, turn to Acts. Wow. Acts chapter 1. Because they were still stuck on the kingdom. Even after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and everything he taught them, they were still stuck on the kingdom. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. The former trees have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself after alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God, spiritual kingdom. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with 
Water. We talked about this. John the Baptist was baptizing with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Jesus baptizes with the Holy Ghost and with fire. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? They go back to the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God. That's a reference to the physical kingdom. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Believed on in the world. There was people that believed on him in the world. But he was preached unto the Gentiles. Verse 9, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. They were still stuck on the millennial kingdom. Can we get that kingdom still? Do we, can we have another chance at that kingdom? And that's why Acts is a transition book, because they were still fighting between themselves on whether uh, the, the gospel, trying to fall back into the old gospel and, try, and, and the new gospel, and trying to mix them both. And It's like, no, they're going to the Jews, trying to preach to the Jews and give them one more chance. But once the Jews flat out rejected Jesus yet again, and the gospel goes completely to the world, Paul talks about my gospel. It's repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. It's not a water baptism. It's a Holy Ghost baptism. And there's a changed life that follows true conversion. Right. That's the gospel for today that's preached unto the Gentiles. Jesus is preached unto the Gentiles. Probably getting ahead of myself again. Uh, I put on here that that's why in the book of Acts you see water baptism, but when you start getting into Romans, it, it goes away. Why? Because that water baptism was part of the gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Holy Ghost baptism is, the, is what we preach today. You need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. You need to be saved, truly saved and converted by the Holy Spirit, not by water, but by the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 reads, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, the Holy Spirit. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into that one Spirit. It's Holy Spirit baptism. It's repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. Sometimes for some of us it's like we're begging God to save us because we know we're not worthy. We're dirt. We're worthless. Okay? Lord, I'm, I'm not worthy to be saved. Lord, please have mercy on me, a sinner. Please, Lord, will you save me? And to this day, brothers and sisters of Christ, you still have people attacking just asking God to save you. Their pride and their flesh are in charge so much they refuse to ask God to save them. And when, they, when that pride gets chipped away by the Lord, remember he baptizes with the Holy Ghost and with fire at the great right throne. When those people, if they continue to reject and refuse to ask God to save them, when they stand before God at the great white throne and he chips away all that pride and everything, it'll be too late to ask God to say, oh, I'm sorry, Lord, please, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry, Lord, please. Ah! And to the lake of fire. It's too late then. To ask God to save you, you need to do it now. Today, now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. You need to ask God to save you now. You need to repent, believe, confess both in prayer, and ask God to save you. But it's the Holy Spirit that baptizes. It's Jesus who saves us. Jesus does the saving. You can't save yourself. Water baptism doesn't save Speaking some demonic tongue doesn't save you and claim it's a, you know, a holy language or something, like speaking in tongues. Or that. that doesn't save you. Okay? Jesus saves. And he looks at the heart. Remember, he saw right into the heart of that woman. She's trying to deceive him, and he saw right into her heart. God looks at the heart, brothers and sisters in Christ. 
And anybody, if you're lost and watching this, God looks at the heart. If you come to Him thinking, I'm looking for a free pass, you'll never get saved. I'm just looking for a free pass. I, I, I plan on sinning. I love my sin. I have no problem with sin. And I'm just looking for a free pass. He'll never save you. You've got to come to Him broken. You've got to come to Him Sin is wrong. I am so filthy and drenched in sin. I'm just so filthy and wicked, Lord. Have mercy on me, a sinner. You've got to come to Him broken. He won't save you. But Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, is the one who saves. He baptizes with the Holy Ghost. Galatians 3.27 we read, For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ the changed life. Jesus is now your king. And if he's your king, when he commands, when your king commands, you obey. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Put no wicked thing before thine eyes. Okay. Uh, idolatry. That's a big thing for the next month. Idolatry. Uh, pagan, bringing in pagan practices, traditions of men, holding the traditions of men above the word of God. Is Jesus your king? Then, why, then we need to act like he's our king. We need to obey his commands. For those who have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You're my Lord. You're my Savior. You're my king. Command me, O Lord. What do I need to do? He's cleaned up my life. I'm still struggling with the flesh. We're going to struggle with the flesh till the day we die. Remember what Paul said? We're no longer true liberty is being freed from the, uh, a law of the consequences of a law that's in place, the law of sin and death. When it says we have liberty in Christ Jesus, the law of sin and death, death gets dropped. He sets and says that with my mind, my soul, I may serve the law of God. But with my body, I can't remember if it says body or flesh, I'm paraphrasing, but with, I'll say with my flesh, the law of sin. Death gets dropped, but he's still under the law of sin. I still sin to this day, brothers and sisters of Christ. I think thoughts, uh, I say things, I mess up and say things wrong that I should have said that way or should have said things. Sometimes I, my actions, I'm still a sinner. It's something that we're going to struggle with to the day we die. But God has cleaned up my life greatly. Since the moment I was saved to this point right now, and you look at it, there's been a gradual Sometimes a big change at the beginning. There was a big change. And then you fight that change. I talk about this, but I saw some of us have testimonies where we fought the change. And it really made our life harder. And you go back and say, why did I ever fight the Lord on this? Why did I just give it up? I'll go ahead and throw it out there. Christmas, why did I ever fight the Lord on this? Why didn't I just give it up? Why did I fight the brethren on it? Why didn't I just give it up? Why did I sacrifice my walk with the Lord and my walk with the brethren, my fellowship with the brethren? It's walk with the Lord and fellowship with the brethren over Christmas. Why did I fight the Lord over video games, Hollywood movies, video games, TV shows? Um, I think I said video games and porn. Why would I fight? Because those are the things I struggled with. Why did I fight the Lord over this stuff? It took a while to get that stuff out of my life. And you look at now, there's a change. I've put on Christ. And people, you can tell these false converts when they get mad at you because, A, in their life, there hasn't been a change. They want that change to be just unbelief to belief. They're part of the group of people that want a free pass in a sense of, I, I can still sin all I want and go to heaven, like insurance. It's just insurance. Let's use it that way. I just, I'm just wanting to get, I, I want to get water baptized so I can have insurance that I can go to heaven and still live however I want to live. Jesus isn't my king. I mean, I can say he is, but I'm not going to treat him like he's my king. I'm not going to treat him like he's the capital L Lord. And I'm not going to treat him like he's really, he's my savior in the sense that I get to sin all I want. That's why the Bible talks about we're not supposed to use liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Death might have been dropped. When you sin as a Christian, you're not going to go to hell. But are we supposed to use that liberty as an occasion to the flesh? God forbid. Now I'm going to another verse. <laughs> How are we that dead to sin live any longer therein? How are we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? We've put on Christ. Jesus was preached unto the Gentiles. 
And it was believed on the world. There were Jews that got saved, Gentile, predominantly Gentiles that got saved, that are getting saved today. It's preached into the world. People's lives are being changed. They're giving their lives to Christ and saying, Command me, O Lord, tell me what to do. Okay, do this, don't do that. You need to start every day with the Word of God. You need to end every day with the Word of God. You need to be praying every day. Uh, if I could, I'm, I'm, I get to see the screen up here <laughs> that I'm on the screen. So I'm pointing at me, not you, even though it looks like I'm pointing at you, brothers and sisters. I'm pointing at me. God's like, you need to read the Bible every morning and every night. Start your day with the Word of God. End your day with the Word of God. You need to pray every day. Okay? You need to be giving me thanks, giving God thanks in all things, giving God glory in all things. You see that wicked thing you're doing over there? That needs to stop. You see that wicked thing you're doing over there? That needs to stop. Okay? He commands, we obey, and He changes our lives, and we are better for it. We have more peace. I have more peace and more joy than those false converts out there. The people that I mentioned earlier. I have more peace and more joy. And you know when that peace and joy starts to vanish? You know why? Because I start falling back into the flesh and letting the flesh take over. The flesh starts becoming my king. The flesh starts becoming the Lord. The lowercase Lord. I'm sorry. A lowercase Lord. In other words, the flesh starts being in charge and Jesus isn't in charge. And the next thing I know, I look around, that peace is gone. That joy is gone. Oh yeah. So, sorry for that little sidetrack, but brother, sister in Christ, you put on Jesus Christ, He's your commander, He's your chief, He's your king, He's your capital L Lord, the Lord. He's your savior, and your actions prove it, not your words. Your actions. So let's get to Peter. I want to talk about Peter. Okay, Peter, he's an apostle, to the Gentile, or not to, apostle to the Jews, but he still preached to Gentiles. Why? Because Jesus was preached unto the Gentiles and believed on in the world. Turn to Acts 11, 1, 8, 3, 18. He said transition. Acts 11, 1, 3, 18. And the apostles and the brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. Salvation is only of the Jews. For salvation is of the Jews. So they're stuck in the Old Testament. And they contend with Peter. How could you do this? How could you go to them? Verse 3, saying, Thou went into the men uncircumcised and didst eat with them. Verse 4, remember the, old, the woman at the well, and Jesus was talking to them, and they were like, it's like filthiness to talk to a Samaritan and for the Jews to have any dealing with the Samaritans. How is Jesus talking to this woman? But they didn't say anything. That's what they're acting like here. Verse 4, but Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it up by order unto them, saying, It was in the city of Joppa, per I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. A certain vessel descended, as it had been a great sheet, let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. Upon the which, when I had fastened mine eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth, and the wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord. For nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there was three men already come into the house where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we went and we entered into the man's house. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. These are Gentiles. Shall be saved. 
and I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Then remember I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. They weren't baptized with water. The Holy Ghost fell on them. So that's, a, I mean, there's just so much evidence in here, going on a side note, that they, you have to be baptized with water to, get the, to receive the Holy Ghost. It's a lie. Okay? The Holy Ghost, he's preaching to the Gentiles, and they're getting saved. Believed on in the world, that we read up there in 1 Timothy 3.16. Believed on in the world. Verse 17, For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace. And glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Now remember, there were still some sign gifts, because this is a transition book. They're still trying to go to the Jews. The Jews require a sign. The Gentiles seek after wisdom. But we see here, Peter's like, Not so, Lord, when it came to the dream. I, I, nothing common or unclean. Peter was probably one of those people standing there saying, Why is Jesus talking to that woman? Salvation has gone out to the world. That's why the fact that Jesus was preached unto the Gentiles is so important. Salvation has gone to the world. Anybody, anybody can, the key word there is can, get saved today. Brother in Christ said if you're breathing, it's a great analogy, if you're breathing, you can get saved. You die, you, you've got no more chances. Okay, we get caught up, it's too late. If the body of Christ gets caught up, you can still get saved in the time of Jacob's trouble. But the point is, is I'll, I'll be more specific. If you die, you have more chances. If you're standing at the great white throne to be judged, see the saved get as the judgment seat of Christ. I believe it's the same throne, but they call it the judgment seat of Christ because we get judged at a different time period than the whole all the people that are lost. But you have the judgment seat of Christ for saved, and the great white throne for lost. If you find yourself standing before the great white throne to be judged, it's too late. But right now, are you breathing? Not for the brothers and sisters in Christ, but the lost people. If anybody, lost person comes across and made it this far listening, are you breathing? You can get saved. Salvation has gone out to the world. People, anyone, anyone, anyone can, keyword again, can get saved. Will everybody get saved? No. Absolutely not. Not because they didn't have a choice. Anybody can get saved today. But there's a lot of people who choose not to. There's a lot of people that get so trapped with the world and choose the world over Jesus Christ. That's a sad thing. But our job, brothers and sisters of Christ, is just keep preaching the gospel and pray for, come across somebody that wants the truth that wants to worship the Father in spirit and in truth, <laughs> that wants salvation, that is sick and tired of their disgusting, sinful state. Uh, Acts 15.7. Uh, you can turn there. Acts 15.7 with Peter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto, the men, unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by, the, by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost. There it is again. God knows the heart. Just because someone says, oh yeah, I believe, head belief. Oh yeah, I believe, I believe, doesn't mean that God's going to save them. God knows the heart. Are they truly broken? The whole point of getting saved is you're getting saved from yourself. Your sinful, wicked flesh. God looks at the heart. Did you repent? Is that belief in your heart? Or is it just in your head? Uh, I love the brother in Christ mentioned this before. Uh, he heard it from somebody else, but you miss heaven by 13 inches. It's up here. It's not down here. God looks at the heart, brothers and sisters in Christ. 
We preach the gospel, and then God ta takes over. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're ambassadors for Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about being an ambassador. Uh, preach, we preach the gospel. We plant seeds. God takes over. He looks at the heart. God will deal with them from that point on. When someone gets saved, then we get to do some more work for the Lord. And, you know, point them to the King James Bible. Tell them about what God taught me. You know, you need to start your day with the Word of God. End the day with the Word of God. Prayer. Giving God thanks. You need to start working on sanctification. Letting God, as you do your Bible studies, God's going to show you things that you need to get out of your life. Okay. But when it comes to preaching the gospel, God looks at the heart. Right here. Should believe, and God which knoweth, go back to eight, and God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as He did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Yeah. He was preached on into the world, believed on in the world, preached into the Gentiles. There was a change. Okay. The New Testament came in. You read in the book of Hebrews where it talks about the death of the testator. Now, for the New Testament to have any power, there has to be a death of the testator. Jesus Christ died and was buried and rose again, proving that he is God, the Father, fully and completely God. All right? There's only one capital G, God the Father. So we have Peter's experience with, okay, now it's time to go to the Gentiles. That's why it's a big deal. The Jews are like, what are you doing talking to the Gentiles and eating with the Gentiles? Those heathens, those wicked men. Salvation is of the Jews. And Peter, and Peter had to tell him, that's not what the Lord told me. The Lord showed me that what the eye have made clean, not call that uncommon, and unclean. You know? Paraphrasing. Uh, let's go to Paul. What about Paul's experience? Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. Uh, Acts 9, 15. Go back a little bit. Go back to Acts 9, 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. I'm going to stop right there because there's so much to read here. The conversion of Paul. Paul wreaked havoc among the church, to a sum summary. He was killing Christians. Let that sink in. People are always saying, people are worthy. Lately, it just seems like one of the brothers of Christ just really added about, they're just worthy of death, worthy of death. Paul was worthy of death. Paul was a very wicked man. He was killing Christians. Okay. But God saved him. Like I said, if you're breathing, anybody can be saved can be in the key word. But Paul was killing Christians. And he was on the road to Damascus with like warrants. Like today we call it a warrant for people's arrest, as we would say today. Documents signed by the religious leaders saying to go after Christians. So he was on the road to Damascus. He was wreaking havoc in the church. The church feared Paul. It was bad times for the church when Paul was around as a lost man. But as a saved man, it was a great time for the church. But on the road to Damascus, he sees Jesus Christ. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Don't you know it's hard to kick against the pricks? Paraphrasing. Um, what must I do? He blinds him and sends him into a town, and he's sitting there waiting. So then he's talking to this man, which we'll get to his name as we read. So he's talking to this man, saying, hey, you need to go to Paul. But the Lord said unto him, and the guy's like, Ananias, I'm sorry, Ananias. And then I was like, I, I can't go to Paul. That's our Saul. I can't because it's Saul first. I can't go to Saul. He, he kills Christians. He'll kill me. He'll arrest me. Have me thrown in prison. He'll kill me. Verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Why do we call Paul an apostle and not Matthias? And I had someone trying to get on me. There's only 12 apostles to start the New Testament. They're, they're, not, they're not going to be replaced. Once they die, they die. But there has to be 12 apostles to start the New Testament. That's what Peter was saying. But he was jumping the gun. We did that study. He was jumping the gun. Why is Paul, uh, uh, we call Paul an apostle to the Gentiles over Matthias being an apostle? 
Because here, he is a chosen vessel. Jesus chose him. And if you read about Paul, he had the sign gifts of an apostle. Not everybody had those gifts. Only the apostles had those gifts, those sign gifts. Verse 16, For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. But he's a chosen vessel to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Uh, that's He's preached unto the Gentiles, believed on into the world. Uh, first attempt to reach the Jews. I thought this was important. We're going to go through his three attempts. I know this is a longer video, but we're going to go through his three attempts real quick on... Um, here, and you can turn with your scriptures, but we're going to read them real quick. Three attempts to still reach the Jewish people before he, and how many times does he have to say, I'm going to, just going to go to the Jews now. I'm just going to go to the Jews. Getting ahead of myself. But Acts chapter 13, verse 46, we read, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, the Jewish people. But seeing, it put, seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn into the Gentiles. See, that's why we say Acts is a transition book. They're still trying to give the Jews as a whole, as a nation, a chance to accept Jesus Christ. And we always say if they did, would the Millennial Kingdom come in right after that? They rejected Him as a whole. So the Millennial Kingdom got put off again until after the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble when God puts his eyes back on Jacob. Another word for Israel. But we see there, they, though we go to the Gentiles, but in Acts 13, 42, you go up uh, back a few verses, it says, And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that the words might be preached to them the next Sabbath day. The Gentiles were more open to what Paul had to say than the Jewish people. There were still Jews that got saved, don't get me wrong. But the Gentiles were more open to what he had to say. Uh, you jump down to 48, verse 48, and it, and it reads, And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad, and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Gentiles were getting saved. He tried to preach to the Jewish people. Remember in the Old Testament, when Jesus was walking, his earthly ministry, salvation is of the Jews. He's trying to pre preach to the, his people that he loves and cares about, and they reject him. So he says, we're just going to go to the Jews. I mean, Jews. We're just going to go to the Gentiles. Uh, second attempt to reach the Jews, Acts 18, verse 5. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. This is a different group of Jews. And when they opposed themselves, they're opposing themselves, and blasphemed, he shook his raiments and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own head. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. Now there's two things. First, what we're talking about for this study, he tried witnessing to another group of Jews again, and it says here they opposed themselves and, bl and blasphemed. But another thing to get out of this, brother, sister Christ, this is supposed to be our attitude when preaching the gospel. We're not supposed to be car salesmen. We're not supposed to keep beating people over the head and trying to force people into a head belief and, make, and try to create false converts because we're forcing them to say something they don't really believe. We're not supposed to be car salesmen. We preach the truth to people. They don't want the truth, that's what we do. He shook his raiments and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own head. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. Your blood be upon your own head. Brush the dust off our feet. Remember we told the disciples when they went to the Jewish people, those who wouldn't believe the city, brush the dust off your feet. They'll get their just reward. Whose damnation, the Bible talks about whose damnation is just. Anybody that finds themselves at the great white throne by their own fault, their damnation is just. Blood be upon your own heads. The third attempt to reach the Jews. Acts 28. Notice all it's in all in Acts. That's why Acts is a transition book. They still are trying to go to the Jewish people to get them as a nation to, re to accept Jesus Christ. 
But you get into Romans, there's no more water baptism. By the time you get to the end of Romans, no more water baptism. Why? Because it's baptism by the Holy Ghost that matters, not water. Uh, but real quick, there's nothing wrong with getting water baptized as an outward showing to the brethren, I'm one of you. I believe as you do, it's an outward showing. There's nothing wrong with being water baptized, but that's not what saves you. That's the point I'm making. It's the Holy Ghost. It's Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost that saves people, not water baptism. But the third attempt, Acts 28, 23, And when they had appointed him a day, there, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God. Stop right there. Kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom. But his lodging, it's not a ministry headquarters. A lot of people have had brethren try to grab this and say, Look, look, see Peter? Peter had a ministry headquarters. There's nothing wrong with me having a ministry headquarters. No. There was a time period where he was sick. And people had to come into his lodging because he was sick and couldn't go out and preach the gospel. There was a time when he was under house arrest. And he was in lodgings. And lost and saved came to him. Okay, he was preaching. And when people say, this is a ministry headquarters, okay, do lost and saved come in there? No. That's not a ministry headquarters. <laughs> it's not, I mean, you can't relate to what Peter had. Because that's not what Peter had. Peter had a place where he was forced to dwell and people had to come. Or he was like, okay, this is a good place to meet. Because he was still out and about, but this is a good place to meet. We're all going to meet up here and I'll tell you about Jesus Christ. It was his own dwelling. <laughs> so whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. And all day... He's like really has love for them and is really trying to help them see in the scriptures that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. It was prophesied. His death, burial, and resurrection. He fulfilled the pro a lot of the prophecies. Not all of them yet because the thousand years got put off. But he's expounding to them all day. 24, and some believe the things which were spoken and some believe not. There's Jews getting saved. I'm not dis discrediting that. Just because it says that the, the big thing is, is that salvation at one time was of the Jews and only the Jews. Now it's gone into the world. That's why it's so important that, that Jesus was preached unto the Gentiles. But there were still Jews that got saved. Some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall not hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall, not, ye shall see and not perceive. Verse 27, For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed. Sounds like somebody who's of the world. They have chosen the world over the truth. Lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart. God sees the heart. The understanding is not supposed to be up here. It's supposed to be down here. I don't think you can have understanding up here. You can have intellect. And try to solve puzzles intellectually. But it's the heart where the understanding happens. And should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. That's where we get to the part where it talks about he was believed on in the world. Jews believed, but it was the whole world that the gospel went out to the whole world. Jesus preached to everybody. Anybody can get saved, and there's people getting saved all over the world. Today, we seem, it seems really gloomy today, very dim, um, dark. If you want to try to use some words about you know going out there trying to preach the gospel, it seems like hardly anybody wants the gospel today. The real true gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel that leads to a, a changed life that makes you a better person. You're better. God cr cleans you up. It's God that cleaned me up. But nobody wants the change life gospel. Everybody likes the world. They choose the world. Organized religion where it's just superficial. It's not real. It's not here. 
And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. I'm going to go to the Jews. Or Jews, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to the Gentiles. Paul says three times. Okay. Why is it so important that the gospel was preached unto the Gentiles? Once again, because originally it was of the Jews. But turn to Romans 11.25. Uh, went too far. Romans 11.25 For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. There is going to come a time period that the, the time of the Gentiles is going to end. What's it talk, what's Paul, what is Paul talking about here? The catching away of the body of Christ. Gospel has gone out unto the world to be preached unto the world. And when our time is, is ended, I want to say it like it says here, until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. When God says, okay, there's the last Gentile to get saved, God's going to say, come up hither. And we're going to have a catching away. And then his eyes are going to go back to the Jewish people. That's why it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not the great tribulation. It's not the tribulation. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Some people say Daniel's 70 week. The actual title, I mean, that's really vivid, it's obvious, is the time of Jacob's trouble. Could you call it Daniel's 70th week? I prefer to call it the time of Jacob's trouble because that's the time of Israel's trouble. That's what the Bible says that time period is actually called. Okay? Now, there's nothing wrong with doing it either way, but I just want to say I prefer, me, the time of Jacob's trouble. Why? Because it's so obvious. Time of Jacob's trouble, it's about Israel. God's going to turn his eyes back to Israel during the time of Jacob's trouble. And you can read all about that in Revelation, how he's turned his eyes to people. The Jewish people are sealed. A certain amount of them are sealed. Okay? So they don't take the mark. Okay? And they're protected from God's wrath that's being poured out. Why is it so important? Because it's the time of the Gentiles. When you fulfilled, that's when God's going to go back to dealing with the Jewish people. He hasn't forgotten the Jewish people. The Jewish people have been done away with. There's still Jews that can get saved today, absolutely. But when it comes as a nation, the Jewish people at the election, as a nation, God's chosen people, God's not done with them. He just put them off. And He's going to go back to dealing with them when our time has come to go home. I look forward to that time. I really do. The thousand year reign. Remember Paul went to the Jews three times. Okay, I'm going to the Gentiles. And you get to Romans where you actually start at for Christians today, hardcore. Um, it's just to the Gentiles. And they're no longer preaching that you have to be baptized with water because that old gospel has been done away with. It's not done with, I'm sorry. The old gospel has been put off till time of Jacob's trouble. So the thousand year reign when Jesus comes and reigns, rules and reigns for a thousand years. The thousand year reign of Jesus Christ was put off until after the time of Jacob's trouble. And that is, and that's our study. So when you read that part, brothers and sisters of Christ, in 1 Timothy 3.16, preached unto the Gentiles. Why is that such a big deal? Why is that such a big deal? Uh, because salvation is of the Jews in the Old Testament. The Gentiles are heathens. Okay, there was a change. Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The gospel has now gone out unto the world. People are getting saved. Jews are getting saved. Gentiles are getting saved. Samaritans are getting saved. Every, there's people from all over the world that are getting saved. He's being believed on in the world. So, next time you read that, hopefully this will help you understand that that is very important. Why is being preached to the Gentiles important? It shows that the Jews got put to the side, got put on hold. God's gone out into the world. True salvation's gone to the world. But he's not done with the Jewish people. 
So hopefully this has helped you, brothers and sisters of Christ. And we've got one more part to do for this study. <laughs> one more part and we're done. Okay, received up into glory will be the last part of this study. So I thank you for following along. It's been a lot of fun and, and that you guys kind of put up with me going up on rabbit trails here and there. But it's just so important that we need to keep preaching the salvation to the world, to the Gentiles. Uh, Jews too. I, I always pray the Lord, would I ever get an opportunity to witness to a Jew? I would love to. But they're very hard to, to witness to. Um, today I think it's probably equal. <laughs> when you look out, I'm laughing not because it's really funny, it's just one of those hysterical laughs like, I, it's just so, <laughs> so I apologize. But today I think it's equal because even the Gentiles today, you look out there like we've just talked about, you're trying to witness to the Gentiles today, it's hard. The world has such a hold over people, and they don't want to give up the world. They don't want to give their life as their own, and they want to do what they want to do, and they don't want to give their life to Jesus Christ. And you've got this false belief, this deception out there that they've deceived people into believing they're Christians and they're saved, when in their heart they know they're not. Because eventually, if they truly are seeking the truth, I was one, I was a false convert for most of my life, you truly are seeking the truth, God will bring you to the truth. King James Bible, to the real Jesus Christ, to the real gospel, the changed life gospel. Okay? He'll bring you to the truth. But that deception out there, you, most people I come across, they've heard about Jesus and want nothing to do with Him. Or they heard about Jesus and, oh, I'm saved too, I'm saved too. Did you repent? Oh, that, that's not part of salvation. You don't have to repent. That's, that's, that's works-based salvation. Did you ask God to save you? Oh, that's works-based salvation. You don't ask God to save you. They've got this head belief that I'm saved, I'm a Christian. And that's what we talk about, and I'm kind of rabbit trailing it, but we talk about when Jesus talked about how they sit there and say it's the millennial kingdom, but it's good instruction and righteousness when you have people at the great white throne saying, what am I doing here? I'm one, of, I'm one of you, I'm with you, Lord, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. And he's like, I never knew you, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Right? I never knew you. There's so many false converts out there. It's, I've yet to come across one person in my life as a Christian. I've been saved seven years now. I've yet to come across one person that hasn't heard the name Jesus. In the comment section, Brother Sister Christ, if you have, please, I'd love to hear about it. In the comment section, I have yet to come across one person that hasn't, that hasn't heard the name Jesus. They've perverted, Satan has gone through and perverted and put out a antichrist, which Jesus warned us about, put out antichrist, these fake Jesuses all over, and it's so hard to reach the, the Gentiles. Our brothers, <laughs> our physical, our, by blood, brothers and sisters, blood, not spiritual. Um, our people, our, our, our family, our friends, it's hard to reach them for Jesus Christ today. It is so hard. Um... But back then, the Jews were the stubborn ones, and the Gentiles were the ones that, I want to hear more, I want to hear more. Today, they're both stubborn. And these last days, before the catching away of the body of Christ, it's like nobody hardly wants to hear about it. But that doesn't relieve us from the responsibility of still putting out gospel tracts. Uh, still trying to witness when a door opens up. Okay? Um, so I have my magnet on my card. Some people mention my magnet. Oh, that's an amazing magnet. And I start talking to them, and it doesn't take long for them to turn and run, tuck tail and run. Why? Because they, they're professing Christians, but they're not real Christians. I start talking to them. Oh, yeah, I, 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 that's, that verse is from the King James Bible, God's perfect written word, you know, and true salvation. Start talking about true salvation and God's perfect written word and the changed life, and they just tuck tail and start running. Oh, yeah, that's, I got to go, I got to go. All of a sudden, my magnets on my car aren't that great anymore. You see what I'm saying? That's what we're having to deal with today. But we still need to try, brothers and sisters in Christ, we still need to try to keep witnessing when we can. Okay, when doors are opening. If someone asks you about Jesus Christ, they, that magnet is a door that I have on my car. It's an open door. Someone mentions it, I talk to them, then they tuck tail and run. Okay, but it was still an open door. I still talked. I still gave them a chance. I tried to preach truth to them. Okay, but don't feel down that, that today that this world. Remember Paul's answer: brush the dirt off his feet. Your blood be upon your own head. I am clean. 
as long as you're preaching the gospel and handing out gospel tracts, if people are just, oh, I don't want anything to do with it, and they're going, and you're like, am I doing something wrong, Lord? No, you are clean. Their blood be upon their own heads, whose damnation is just. You're clean because Paul's like, I did what I was supposed to do. I preached truth to them, but they didn't want the truth. Okay. We're going to be doing some other studies, and one of the studies is going to be, uh, do, you have, do you acknowledge the truth? Because I've noticed this lately, people acknowledge the truth, but do you have a love of the truth, and are you willing to fight for the truth? Just acknowledge the truth doesn't do anything. It's worthless just to acknowledge the truth. Do you have a love of the truth? Are you willing to fight for the truth? Something that we're going to be looking into. So, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hang in there. Catching away could happen at any time. I know some brethren are trying to say, it's years down the road. That's the wrong attitude to have. The catching away of the body of Christ can happen at any time. It might be ten years down the road. It might happen tomorrow. It might happen right when I'm doing this study. We need to have the attitude that Jesus could come back any time. How is your life? Jesus can come back any time. How, how much cleanup do you still have to do? Jesus can come back any day now. How much work have you done for him? Are you praying every day? Are you reading your Bible every day? Are you giving God thanks every day? Are you giving God glory every day? When God opens doors, are you presenting the gospel to people, witnessing to people, and so on and so forth? You can come back any day. And if you keep put, when you have people that pr promote that Jesus isn't coming back for years and years, you don't have that attitude. You had, oh, I still have things to clean up in my life, but nah, I got time. I got time. I can put it off. Oh yeah, I haven't really done much for the Lord, but you know what? We've got time. We got years. We got time. I, it's not a big deal. You see how that works? So grace and peace in these times, brothers and Christ, stay strong. Continue to have a love of the truth. Continue to fight for the truth in the life that you live. I'm not talking about going out there with swords and pickaxes and stuff like that. What I mean by fighting for truth in the life that you're living, not just in words, but in deed, the life that you're living, the stands that you take, fight for absolute truth. So I'll say it again. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.